because that's really not the goal. The goal is not to be successful and famous. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's not the goal. The goal is if you have a specific God-given ability to live your life out through that, one. And two, we have a responsibility to push the conversation forward until we're all equal. Mm -hmm. Until we're all equal in this place because until everyone's free, no one's free. And that's just... Right. That's just the fact. Stop drifting in life and drop your anchor. Let's get into it. Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. Before we get started, I want to encourage and strongly advise everyone to go subscribe to two YouTube channels. One being Immortal Minds. My brother Soul Immortal governs that channel. Powerful, powerful man, powerful brother. The second one being alchemistic gold mine. Man, this brother I met maybe a month ago, and uh, I'm never disappointed when I go to his channel. Also, subscribe to the Power Circle. That link is in the description. The brother, soul, and mortal, founder and creator of the Power Circle, and the host, and myself, and the brother, alchemistic gold mine, are the ambassadors. Subscribe. Now, that clip you saw in the beginning, that was a conversation, a documented, recorded uh, conversation or interview uh, between Jay-Z and the editor and lead journalist of uh, New York Times, uh, Dean Baquette. And that interview was probably probably an hour, two hours long. Uh, I watched it when it first premiered maybe a couple of years ago, a few years ago. Powerful interview. Uh, Jay-Z revealed a lot. Now, that particular clip is what I want to focus on, of course. Man, Jay-Z hit it right on the head. Hit it right on the head how to elevate and get to the next level. And, uh, man, I love it. First, he said, it's not about fame. It's not about money. It's about identifying with owning and and exercising your God-given gift and talent. Man, haven't I been saying that? That's what it's about. And everything else will come your way. Secondly, he said it's about making sure we're all equal. If one of us is lost, all of us are lost. And when he says equal, he's not talking about materialistic things. He's talking about equal in understanding. If I'm awake, I have to wake you up. I have to be concerned about you being awake. And being awake is knowing why you're here and what you're supposed to be doing. Tapping into your higher self. You know? exercising your God-given gift and talent. That's what it's all about. Man, If that, that's those are two important ingredients in the formula. Two very important ingredients. If anyone is telling you to do something outside of that, they're wrong. They're leading you wrong, and you need to separate yourself from that person immediately. Yeah, turn them off immediately. Oh, uh, That's what it's all about. It reminds me uh, so much of Napoleon Hill's book, Outwit and the Devil. Now, my brother, Soul Immortal, he talks about this book often. He he references quotes uh, from Napoleon Hill often. He references different nuggets of wisdom in the book, Outwitting the Devil. Uh, I've never read the paperback, but I've listened to the audio book several times. Man, uh, one of my my uh, favorite books, no doubt. One of my favorite people is Napoleon Hill, the great late Napoleon Hill. So y'all check that out. But we're just going to focus on when Napoleon Hill talks about drifting and outwitting the devil. Who's a drifter versus who's not the drifter? And I won't really go into too much detail on that because, man, this could be, talking about that, it needs to be a series. This will be four or five hours long uh, recording 
if I went and dealt with that. And uh, and I probably wouldn't even be doing it justice. Probably would have to have my, my, my brother Soul on here uh, to tag team that thing. But, you know, what is drifting? Drifting is having no direction, having no aim, no intention, not standing on anything, not being rooted in any sound principles or morals, uh, not being focused, not knowing why you're here and what you're supposed to be doing. I like to compare it to uh, a boat. Your life is a boat and the world is the ocean. That boat is absent of a captain, of anyone on it, guiding it, leading it to a particular destination. That's what a drifter is. And when circumstances of life come into play, just like with the boat, circumstances of the weather come into play, bad weather, right? Tornadoes, high winds, big waves, whatever. You gotta have a captain, someone who's confident and experienced and faithful to know how to guide that boat through those rugged and treacherous storms. You have to, or it's gonna upside and it's gonna be disaster. That's your life. You gotta know where you're going, how you're gonna get there. You gotta know the ending before you know the beginning. If you know the ending, if you know where you wanna be, where you're going, not where you want to be, where you're gonna go. You know your destination, where are you going to go? Everything else will take care of itself. But know the ending first. Know the ending. Man, I know people who are avid readers. And if they're reading, particularly a, a mystery book, they'll go all the way to the end and see how the book ends. And then they'll go back to the front of the book and read it. And that's how we got to do our lives. We got to know the ending first. And then we'll go back and set the plan in motion. Create a plan and set it in motion. That's how you avoid being a drifter. Now, I'm not going to go into detail about what Napoleon Hill states in outwitting the devil of what a drifter is and what a drifter is not. Like I said, man, we'll, we'll be here for hours, but I advise you to check out that book. You got an audio book form on YouTube. Check that out. And, uh, but a drifter doesn't know where he's going. A non-drifter definitely knows where he's going. And he knows the ending. He'll figure out the rest in due time. But he definitely knows the ending, how it's going to end. You got to write your entire story. When I wrote A Toast to the Men, before I knew the beginning, before I knew the meat of it, before I knew anything in between the beginning and the end, I knew the ending. I knew the point I wanted to get across. I knew my mission. I knew my purpose. And then I figured out, as time went, how I was going to get there. But the ending, the purpose, the mission never changed. I was focused on getting there. And I got there. Jay-Z is absolutely correct. Focus on honing your God-given talents and gifts. Everyone's here for a reason. Everyone. Everyone is a genius. I know you might be saying, nah, not, not, not old girl, not old boy. Or you might be saying, not, not me, not you. I'm telling you, everyone is special. Everyone is a genius. Just got to tap into it. You got to tap into it and believe and know what you're here for. Everybody's going to get that at different times. I believe some of us are going to have to come back and get it. But when you find out 
what you're here to do, what your God-given gift and talent is, and then you exercise that, you put that emotion, manifest that, that's how you become everlasting. That's how you leave your fingerprints on this world. That's how you live a life worth remembering. That's the legacy. If anyone's telling you opposite of that, man, they're lying to you. They're lying to you. Let me, let me tell you something else, too. I see a lot of get-rich schemes on YouTube and um, IG, and there are no short, shortcuts. You're going to pay for it one way or another. Now, you might make a few bucks real quick, but it won't last, and you won't have eternal peace. There will always be something in you feeling incomplete, feeling shame, always, because you know you're out of alignment. You're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Facts. And something I want to know, I want you to notice too, for my people viewing the video, look at Jay-Z's eyes. They say the eyes are the windows to the soul. And I believe that. You can tell a lot by looking into someone's eyes. Uh, if they're happy, sad, depressed, you know, worried, scared, relaxed, joyful, you can, you can tell everything, you can see everything you want to know by looking into someone's eyes. Facts. When you look into this man's eyes, you see relaxation, you see joy, you see fulfillment. That hasn't always been the look in Jay-Z's eyes. I'm telling you, and some of these guys, I see uh, they're not aligned, but they have these schemes of somewhat coming up Man, look into their eyes. They're not happy. They're stressed. I want you to pay attention to that. Don't pay attention too much of what they're saying. Actually listen and look. Look deep into their eyes, man. These guys are scared and they're panicking. That's because they're out of sync. They're not aligned. Just something uh, to pick up on and, and pay attention to. But... I'm gonna give you a nugget of how to stop drifting in life and drop your anchor. I'm gonna break this down. So this is what I believe. I'm gonna read this to you. <clears throat> One's anchor must be the firm witness of scripture grounded in faithful and prayerful devotion. One's anchor. One's. What is one's? That's your higher self. That's you. That's not anyone outside of you. That's your God-given purpose and gift and talent. That's your energy, your higher self, why you're here. That's the one. That's the one. That, whatever that is, has to be anchored has to have an anchor with the firm witness of scripture. What's an anchor? Hope and future existence. That's what an anchor is. Hope and future existence. But an anchor must be attached to something. What is it going to be attached to? going to be attached to my God-given talent and gifts. That's the anchor. That's what it's going to be attached to. And it must be the firm witness of scripture grounded in faithful and prayerful devotion. The firm witness. Firm. The strong witness. The strong witness of scripture grounded in faithful and prayerful devotion. So we already said the anchor there's hope in future existence. Future existence. And now they're saying I must have a, be a firm witness 
of scripture grounded in faithful and prayerful devotion. How can I be a witness to an anchor if the anchor means the hope of future existence? How can I be a witness to that? That means I have to time travel up here in my mind. I have to see it. I have to experience it in my mind. I have to write the ending before I write the beginning. That's how you witness it. That's how you witness a future existence. You have to see the end. You have to see the end. That be a witness of scripture. Scripture, what is scripture? Word, affirmations. I spoke it, I said it, I affirmed it. It is. It is. The ending is. I know you don't see it yet, but I've already witnessed it. I established it. It's there. Now I'm going to go back in time to the beginning and I'm going to walk my trek and reach the ending so you can witness it in real time. Must be grounded. Grounded. And faithful and prayerful devotion. Grounded. Now when I think of grounded, man, that affirmation of hope, of future existence, must be grounded. The affirmation must be grounded, man. Affirmation, when I think of grounded, I think of a plane that has been grounded. It has been prohibited to move. It has been prohibited, restricted to move. So when you say it, when you speak it, when you affirm it, you have to ground that thing. It's prohibited to move. When you ground an electric outlet on an electric wire, when you ground it, it prohibits electricity from flowing. You ground it. That's what your affirmations have to do to your anchor. That's what your words have to do to your anchor. The hope of future existence. That's what it has to do. And then that grounding, it has to be grounded properly. You can't just ground a plane or anything or any way. You can't just ground electricity any old kind of way. You have to ground it properly. That's a process. That process is in faithful and prayerful devotion. Faithful. Rock. Rock. What is a rock? What is faith? What is faith? What is rock? Unbreakable belief. Prayerful devotion. Prayer. Now you may think prayer is bowing your head and praying. No, we already affirmed it through scripture, through our words, right? Did that. So what are we going to do? Prayer. Prayer is repetitive action. Repetitive action. Repetitive action. That's why, you know, the word says, stay in continuous prayer. You have to live this. Yeah, I said it. I spoke it. But now I got to live it. Because if prayer meant bow your head, how can I stay like that continuously? No, prayer is alive. It's an action of me living, me living it out. The works. And that has to all be done at the end. Devotion. Prayer for devotion. Love. Devotion is love. That's how everything is sealed. It's sealed in love. So I'm going to read that to you again. One's anchor must be the firm witness of scripture grounded in faithful and prayerful devotion. That's the cheat code. That's the cheat code, fellas. If anyone is telling you a formula outside of that, man, it's synthetic. It's not natural. It's not the real deal. 
is hella toxic. Hey, as always, from me to you, love, peace.